In the early days of the trafficking, anti-trafficking community, as you know so well, the State Department required a minimum number of cases. A country would be put on the tip report only if a minimum number of cases were proven. It makes sense. You don't want to, to issue a scathing report based, based on al allegations. These were provided. Countries were rated. I, I know this because I was involved in designing a lot of several of the methodologies used to, um, to, to count these numbers. What, what are we waiting for? in this particular area. How many more young women will it take who come and say they endured a miscarriage because they were wrenched into a bus with their, with their baby whose eye gets, is, is wounded next to a car holding on to the mother? Enough is enough, really. How many more times do we have to sit here and bring voices and bring stories and talk about parents who agonize? They have, imagine as a parent, your daughter doesn't come home from work, you don't see her for two months, three months, nine months, you hear nothing. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll then hear her, you'll see her face covered in a veil announcing her conversion in muffled terms on a YouTube video. But worse, maybe you'll hear nothing, absolutely nothing. The silence now, the, ref the abductions, the disappearance followed by nothing is so disturbing because something is happening to those young women. All right, they, they haven't been raptured, they haven't disappeared into thin air, something has happened to them. What? We need to find out. We need to require an accounting. We need to know how many there are and we need to start investigating what is happening to these disappeared women. Women need to be able to pick up their children from school without fear of being abducted. Young girls need to be able to go out and have cups of coffee with their friends without, one, without fearing that the brother lurking in the background is perhaps going to be raping them. Young women need to be able to come and, and go and, and have lives without looking over their shoulder 24 hours a day, wondering if they're going to end up forced into a taxi, thrust into Al-Azhar to be forcibly converted, married to someone that has deceived them about the nature of the relationship and living in a coerced situation as a domestic servant or potentially trafficked outside of their own country. To not address this issue is to saying that we don't care and that we cannot say. So should there be an amendment uh, to the foreign aid bill? Absolutely, because we're talking about one of the rights that is just so fundamental to all of us here as, as Americans. It, it, it's at the heart of what our country is. Because of fear of abduction, this, they now feel that these women feel they have no movement. They can't come and go. The parameters of their daily lives are increasingly entrenched around survival and safety. This is no way to live. The suffering of parents who haven't heard from their daughters for months and years and the silence continues is no way for a family to live. The sense of marginalization of, of the young children who were converted because their mother was forced into conversion and live in a no man's land of not being accepted by, by their own communities, that's not a way for anybody to live. Mr. Smith, it's time that we require acknowledgement of this issue as a bona fide violation of human rights, as a, viol as a violation of religious freedom, as a cruel instance of exploitation against women, as a case of human trafficking, and something that must end. Thank you.